Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching me from. Uh, for the returning subscribers, welcome back. Yes, thank you so much for always coming, giving me your time, your ears. I do really appreciate. And for those that are new, uh, welcome as well. What we do here, we do scrutinize and analyze music. Yes, that's what we do here. So um, before we waste any minute, let's dive in. Let's hear what the song today have to offer us. Because here we learn every day from each song. We learn a lot. That's why we are here. Because, hey, education is good, right? All right, today we are on music shot number 93. It's a very, very beautiful song. Actually, it's a new song. It's not that old. It's by 90K and by the Kawajin. Those that are from Kenya, we know those two artists, very talented, like many others, many of our artists. All of them, they are very talented, right? And they've made a very beautiful song. The song is called Rera Shia Nashiaku. Rera Shia Nashiaku. Support your children. Yes. In short forms. Let's dive in. Let's hear what the song got to say, right? I'll read what the song says. This is a son and a father. They have, they're having a chat. In this song, okay, just to elaborate what's going on here. The son is telling the father, My dad, where were you when my mom was hustling? Going to cultivate and dig in people's lands. When my mom had to spend days at Suela, I think it's a flower plantation, begging for work. So there is a son. He, she's, uh, he is asking the dead. These are dead, big dead. Dead that only helped the mother to give birth to the children. Then he left. Like many men do. What can I say? Many and many. There are some men who do this. And we call those kind of men dead beats deads. Which is very unfair. I see you, child of the most high. Thank you for coming. Music shot number 93. A very, very beautiful song. And here is the son. I've just read now the first verse. The son is asking the dad, where were you? When mom was struggling with us, mom was going to different places, lands. And then the son is asking the father, because it seems like the dead, dead is coming back. Let's hear what's going on. Because the son is asking, dad, where were you? We didn't get to know you. You left us. Mom struggled with us. Let's hear what the father got to say, right? Nancy Peter, thank you so much for coming. Nice to see you, Nancy. Welcome back. Yes, we are on music shot number 93, Nancy. Very beautiful song. It's a new song by 90K and with the Kawajin. Atirashia Nashiaku. Support your children. This for the dead beats deads. Aduri tu area moi. Here's a song for them. Let's hear what the dad is going to answer after the son is asking him, Where were you? Wariku, wadireku. Let's hear what the dead beat dead got to say. Come here. I tell you, my son. I know you think I'm bad. I call you so we can talk as father and son. Stop the case. I'm still your dad. There he is. Huh? Dead beats dead is now coming telling the son, please, I'm still your dad. I've come so we can talk. Many years he was gone. Many years he didn't remember there were children. Many years he didn't remember there's a son or there's a daughter. Dead beat deads, your days are numbered. You're lucky that in Africa you can do that because here in the West, it's mission impossible. The government will look for you until they get you. Here in the Western world, we don't have dead, dead beat deads. We don't have that. It's even mission impossible. Because if the moment the woman thinks that you're the dad and you're saying you're not, you have to do DNA for test. Otherwise, there's always the support. And that comes whether you like it or not. The government here in the Western world, 
the matter of I respect the government in the West because there are no dead beats dead here. It's me, it's not possible. It's not possible. What about in Africa? What about in Kenya, in my country? Are you a dead beat dead? If you are, listen here. Today is a song for you. So there he is. He's saying to the son, I've come, we talk. Let's hear what the son gonna tell him, right? There's a chorus which says, protect your children out of love. Because of love, protect your children. Even if you don't love their mother, that child is innocent. The child found you being the dead. Yes, so you have to... Uh, you have to protect your children, love your children. Dead beats dead. That's your blood. You need the kameyaku. Ona mo ona kodwe de teni na todo ni watiga ni de kana hati de wedo. You still brought a living human being in this world. You can't escape from that. This song is for you, dead beats dead in Africa, because that's where they are. There are millions there. It's it's very unfair, right? You have to be responsible. I think one day, how I pray that the government in Africa, the government in my country, Kenya, will do like the European world. Make sure there are no deadbeats dads. You are forced to pay whether you like it or not to support the child if you leave. Because, hey, we know that the children, when they're growing up, they need the basic needs. They need food. Kids need clothes. Kids need a home to live in. And there you are. You run away from your partner, leaving the we women. Even if you take Roshiana, why? Why you do that? I see you and wind. Thank you for coming. Music shot number ninety-three. Very beautiful song. I really love this song. It's a new song, amazing song, right? Let's hear on what the sun says. The sun says, "What can I do when you're telling me that you are my dad?" Because now the father told, come, we sit, we talk. I'm still your dad. The son is asking him, the dad beat dead. The son is asking him, what can I do when you're telling me that you're my dad? I'm still young. When I was young, you were still my dad. You are showing up in my life. Nee, I, I, I skip, I'm sorry, I missed one uh, sentence. You are still my dad. When you see me prospering, is the time you are showing up in my life. I don't think that's fair. There we get you. Now, dead beats dead. Muge tere na shiana ire ruo. Ha? Lira shiana shiana neha. Shetwe kama doctors na ma lawyers na ma ya ma businesses matoga. Ni wo mudware you media. Ata nyoka. Eh, ne ni fa fa anyu. The son is asking you now. What can I do? You're telling me you're my dad. When I was young, why well, you didn't say you are still my dad? Now you've waited that I'm prospering. That's the time you're coming in my life. Do you think that's fair? Dead beats dead. That's very unfair. Don't come back. Mutiga wo kali dia sia na sia nyu sia kucia na mawe gani wo mure yo kidia e ona ni ni fa fa anyu no that's very unfair let's hear on what the dead has to say uh, i see you as well uh, child of the most high i already recognize you priscilla i see you thank you for coming music shot number 93 the dad is saying now the the son first told him where you are coming back now when I'm prospering, when you're telling me now that, hey, I'm still your dad and blah, 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 blah. The dad is saying, I didn't return because of your material things. I have come back so I can show you your wealth. Your mom became arrogant and that's why I moved away. And... I didn't, uh, um, wait, uh, uh, that's why I moved away to avoid us hurting each other. Now the dead beat dad. 
Huh? He started to put the blames on the mom. Oh, you know, I've come because I want to talk with you. I want to tell you. You know, when I left, because your mom, your mom was arrogant. She was ignorant. Huh? Your mom was, she was not a good mother. That's why I left before we could fight and kill each other. The dead be dead. They always find reasons because they are ashamed. They are shy. I hope we are together. I see you all that are coming in now. Love God, I see you as well. Thank you all for coming. I hope I've mentioned everybody. Music shot number 93. Support your children. This is a song for the dead beats dead. That's carry on to hear what the song says. Hope we are together up to there. The son is telling the dead. If mom is the one who was bad, because remember the, the, the dead beat dad has already said, your mom was, your mom was, your mom was. That's why I left, blah, blah, blah. The son is telling him, if mom is the one who was bad, then you are not supposed to lead to abandon us. You are not supposed to leave us. How, if the mom was so bad, how can leave leave your child or your children in the hands of a bad person? A good question, right? Come on. So you're lying. You are lying. Dead beats dead. The son is saying, if mom was the bed, then you're not supposed to, to leave us or abandon us. We kids did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong to you. So why did you punish us? What did we do? Why did you do the way you did it? The son is asking the deadbeat dad. Deadbeat dad. Here's a song for you. Both in English and Kikuyu. We, we get to get you. We have to finish deadbeat dad thing in Africa. You know? Like in Kenya, there are many there. Oh, to my wish, Yala, Makora, Makorida, Matikota Kurera. No, the Rasiana Siana, the Hadrasiana, Siaga Mawega, Mutaka, you made it Yanako, eh, Neniva, and you, eh. Ah, here's a song for you. And we have to, cut, I, I pray that songs gonna continue to be like this until we make sure that, like in Kenya, I don't know in other countries in Africa, but in Kenya, dead beats are they've always been there. It's very wrong. It's not all right. One day they have to make it like in the Western world. dead beats that. It's not possible. government Yes. No. You have to be a responsible dad. Let's hear on what the song says. I really love this music. It's amazing. The dad has a reply. He's saying, family of people divorcing. Now he's, now the dead beat dad. First he said the mother was bad and blah, blah. Listen what he's saying now. Uh, I see you as well, Wanga lady. Welcome as well. I see you. Welcome. Yes. So the dad is saying, family of people divorcing. That the husbands are always charged to be guilty. Yes, dead bit by Murioru. I say it. Maybe even the wife is the one with mistakes, but she shows the kids that the dead is the bad one, and all the brains are put on him. Dead bit that moi kwe adi ni yamuno. Now you can hear this. He's saying, the deadbeat dad is saying, huh? the family, for we know when it's coming to divorce and everything, everything is put on the husband. Huh? The thing is, if you're not coping together with your wife, you can go separate ways. Yes, that's not a problem. But you have to take responsibility. You have to pay child support, like the Europeans do. Yes, one agiri okagaya niya. 
na kwa mtu mie nararuto nake wira mugashia you have to see what's the cost what's the expenses mwana thia gashukuru iriku kuri hegyo bashiga na mwana ni arenda uniform a child needs uniforms child goes to school places like kenya they say education is free but we know it that there are always expenses here and there and there is not like the western world here where the education is for free you know it's high time for dad beats dad to wake up you have to stop suppressing the women that's it when it comes to bringing up the kids you wash your hands you wait until the child has is is, is prospering in life no this has to end let's hear on what he's saying now we hear the dead beats dad He's saying, eh, what in the dhuli ni of course you cannot be a dead beat dad. Why there are no dead beat dads in, in Europe? Why they are not? Why they are only in Africa? Why? Because here, if you refuse, if you say okay, I'm not I'm not the father. If you say fully you're not the father. Oko munyo ginya jwere kia hinya. Eko DNA. Yes. Oko matiza kaga. Here you don't go play around with women just pregnanting women anyhow lee then you wash your hands it's mission impossible how i pray and wish uh, one day my country kenya will be like that or even general in africa that the dead beats dads will no longer exist yes you can't just have fun in bed sleeping with a woman and when the woman gets pregnant you wash your hands away where do they how or even after the child is born you you, you have no shame kinya mwana aciari tu na mwana nyo we ni baba oko ya miri gwagathie kana oka maigata you send them away it's so unfair let's hear on what the song says the song is saying um at the at the last uh, at the last verse when homes get into family conflicts we kids are the ones that suffers it's we the the kids you know we kids we need both parents we need mom and dad we need the figures of a mother and a father you know on this last verse it's a I, i really love this song it's an amazing song that when homes get family conflicts we children shiana I will give you my story, my own story, like I always do here. I always tell you my story according to my family, what we went through. I want you to go to Mudikiri. I want you to listen carefully. Mutegeko to Mudikiri. So, at this song is saying, there I finish there, that when conflicts come in homes, family conflicts, the children are the ones that suffers. She are nani shisho na kamageri o maigimo no. Now I'll dive in with my own story why I say this song it's an amazing song because it reminds me to my own I always give you my own story okay um what happened was uh, let me see first I will welcome I uh, uh, will welcome one more rain back thank you for coming I see you in York as well Priscilla updating already I welcome you let me see who else York York uh, Kenya I see you too uh Priscilla updating yes all of you feel welcomed on this music shot number 93 for those who are just coming it's the one of the newest song by Wayda Kawa Jane and 90k yeah the song is called rekeshiana rekeshiana shiaku yes support your children yeah this song is for the dead beats dead that's why i call it right and uh now i'll jump in into my own story and put on my glasses so i can see better so what happened was so that because with this it touched me as well Well, my parents, they are both of them are late. My mom passed 2004, my dad 2021 January. What happened was my parents, they were together many years. But my dad had one problem. He loved alcohol. And mom tried, my late mom tried many years, please stop alcohol, please stop. He never did. But apart from that, I would say my dad he educated us very good schools okay we didn't have any luxury life those of you who follow me you know my story 
you know, we just had a simple Mabati house. We didn't have any electricity or TV or stuff. You know, just a normal house. So, and um, anyway, we know education is very important. And for that, I give thanks to my late dad. He educated me and my siblings nicely in schools, okay? But apart from that, my dad was an alcoholic. He loved alcohol so much. So my mom, after my dad fell sick, he fell sick gout. Gout is a disease for legs. So he was not able to walk. That was when I was entering 1991, when I was entering secondary school. My dad fell sick, gout. So, and he was the breadwinner. So my mom, my late mom, had to jump in. She had to start to be the breadwinner. And because my dad was a farmer, my dad used to take crops to Marigiti. And there was a time my dad, when he first sick, he gave the work to my brother, my older brother, because he had just finished form four. My, my oldest brother, I have two older brothers and me. We are four kids. I'm the third one. And my little sister, we are four kids. So what happened was, my mom thought, okay, now that dad has felt sick, me and my second brother, we had to join uh, secondary school. Mom thought, okay, I can start to try to sell more vegetables in Mombasa. We know that those years, it was business booming in Mombasa when you took cash crop, uh, when you took two crops to Mombasa. So mom started to, to take, you know, lettuce and everything, what my, mom, my dad used to sell in Marigiti, in Nairobi. My mom started to take all those things in Mombasa. And she had a sister who was living there too. So my mom started to sell there. She come back. But the business was not that good because maybe my mom was all the years a housewife. So she really didn't know how to do with that. And sometimes because of transport, sometimes she could go with the goods and the goods were getting damaged and spoiled. So when she arrived in Mombasa, all the things, she, she used to go at a loss. Okay. Because she had to pay the, where she, she had to pay the farmers where she had bought the crop. But when they get damaged, where she, she, she used to go at a loss. And of course, it was bad. And so my dad, uh, my mom thought, okay, what I can do now, maybe because my dad had several pieces of land, my mom thought, okay, maybe I can sell one piece of land in Kikuyu. Kikuyu is, you know, we live in Lakabeta, but there's a place called Kikuyu. My dad had two plots there. And my mom asked my dad, uh, he's bedridden then. Can I sell one piece of land so we can have money for educating the kids? And my dad says, fine. So... The piece of land was sold, right? And me and my brother were able then to uh, to join secondary school in boarding schools as well. We went on from one, okay? And then when we went to form two, I do remember around, yeah, form two, my dad started to recover because he was sick like two years. He was sick, you know, with the gout. So when I was in form two, my dad, after he recovered, he went back to alcohol again. After two years, then my mom told him, please, do I but he went back drinking. And my mom thought, nee, this is too much. So my mom thought, my mom stayed, my late mom stayed with my dad for two years. Mom going Mombasa, working hard, coming this, trying. And then I joined from three and my second brother as well. We were in boarding schools different boarding schools. And then what happened was, because um, my dad refused to stop drinking, my mom left. She had a sister in Mombasa. So my mom said, no, now, now it's, I, I can't stay this anymore. My mom left. Now for good, she moved now to Mombasa to her sister to stay there. And those who follow my story, you know that as I was in Form 3, when I reached second term, on the third term, I left from, uh, from, uh, from Kenya, I moved to Germany. I myself, I moved to Germany. Okay. When I moved to Germany, there was my dad. He's left with my two brothers and my younger sister. Okay. So my mom is already in Mombasa by her sis already. So at home is my late dad and my two brothers who are older and my sister. So what happened? I thought, okay, my sister, she was young and starving, and, you know, with girls and, and these and alone. And she was mama's girl. And my mom was still not so stable because she was living by the seas. She didn't have her own place. So I thought it's better when I called my sister to me in Germany, which I did. So I invited my sister. She came and lived with me in Germany. Okay. My little, my little sister, she used to live in Germany. I took her very fast when I stayed. I just went to school. I learned. I started to work. And then I took her. Okay. So I took, I think, uh, I, I, I gave birth to my daughter in 96, also in Germany. So my, my 
my sister, my little sister came before I had given birth to, to my daughter. So she came. And so at home, in Wakabete is now my dad and my two brothers. Okay? Hope I'm taking you slowly, slowly. So you hope you're together. You're getting my story. So back home in Wakabete is my late dad and my two brothers, my older brothers. Okay? As we're saying, uh, um, me and my sister were nice. I took my sister to school so she could learn German as well. This, you know, we were saying me and my sis in Germany. Okay. Then I thought, hey, now after my daughter was born, she was born like, um, you know, in 96, around there, July. I thought, hey, for Christmas, my dad can come. I want my dad to see snow because he's never seen snow. So I invited my dad to come to Germany and he came. So when he came, um, everything went fine. Those of you who follow my story, you know that I've been telling you stories that because my dad had alcohol problem. I always thought he would change. So I never thought that he would drink, continue drinking, even when he sees so much money. I thought he will be stable. Anyway, what happened was he came to visit us. Now it's me, my sis, and my daughter, and then my husband then. And my dad, I thought, hey, because we have a Mabati house, it will be good when we get a story house. And those years... You know, it was 1996, half a million because the shilling was a lot of money. I know nowadays you can't build a house with the money. But those years, it was quite, it was quite good money. I thought, hey, dad, because I, I, I used then to work and I'd save. I said, hey, dad, you can, um, you can take this money. So you go and build a nice story house. He said, yes. So he took the money, half a million. Okay, I gave to him. He went to Lokabete. Those of you who follow my story, you know, he even didn't stay there. He went to stay with his cousin. And all the money, boom. He drank half a million Kenya shilling, 1996. Huh? it, name it. All those areas were better. So, and then what happened? That time we didn't have so much telephones communication. So I didn't know what I was going, what was going on my sister, because she was staying with me in Germany. So what happened was my little sister went to visit my mom in, in Mombasa. Remember, my mom is living in Mombasa. And meanwhile, that time, I had already bought a house where my mom was staying in between those years, you know, even before dad came to Germany. I'd bought a house and my mom was staying in that house. So at least I know I knew mom is not staying by her sister because where she used to live, it was, you know, and her, my auntie, her sister was not so well. So I had bought a nice house and mom was staying there. So what happened was, Jesus, my sister went to visit mom. In Mobasa, and she thought, Hey, let me go on to Lokabete because my dad had already left then Germany because he only stayed like three weeks or four months or four, four weeks, one month, you know, for visit. My sis went to Lokabete expecting to meet, I had given money before for electricity, now a stone house. My sister expected to have nice house, story house, and nice house for us, and she could make photos to show me when she could return to Germany. She was shocked when she went to Rockabeta. Still, our old Mabati house, even the Mabati is in Nimagashete. Can you imagine? She told, so my sister was so shocked when she came back to Germany. She told me, Guy Jerry, who would tell you back? Who would tell you Nothing. Those of you who saw my story, you know a little bit of this. So, my story, what I'm giving is this. After that, I knew, oh, oh, something is wrong here. So, I decided, okay, if my dad can drink all that, now I cannot give him so much at once because it's crazy. I can't give him big amount of money at the same time. And even I'd given him in between for a car also much money as well. Uh, one million was Kenya shilling for the house and half million was for, for, the, for a car. Yes, that, that's the way it was. Yes, now I remember it very well. Listen what happened. I thought, okay, because he's really alcoholic to drink all that money. I thought the best thing I can do is just to be giving him a little bit money. It was like maybe I thought I can be giving him that thousand kilo shilling just to support himself, keep up. So listen, and he had a bank account, so I used to send the money every month of the account. What happened was after the big money finished, you know, the electricity money and the house money and the car money, how he had drank everything, I stopped to give him much. Guess what he did? He started to terrorize my two brothers. So they used to live in our material home. It's the land where we used to stay. It's for my great, great grandfather. You know how the Kikuyus do it. You have your material home. I think it's from the great, great. They don't sell those lands. They keep it for years and years and years. So my dad had 
a piece and his brother had another piece. The brother was the late brother was living there and my dad was living there. So it was family home, okay? But the title deeds are still in my gra grandfather, great grandfather, or something like that. Anyway, what happened was my dad, they dad started to terrorize my two brothers. He started to tell them, Oh no, come waka. You know you kikuyus. Who is a kikuyu man here? I want to know what happens with the kikuyu men. Why do you behave like that? So brutal. So my dad started to terrorize my two brothers. Wait a minute. My mom was staying in my home. So my brothers should, my two older brothers should also go and, you know, it's crazy. And then for that time, I'd already given money to my two brothers. I wanted them to build each a home. So I told them, okay, because there we have our, our land, our family land. Ask dad to give each you a place where to build. Yeah, you first born, you build your house here. Second born, you build your house here, put electricity. When they ask dad, dad, Jerry has given us money to build. Where can we build? Oh my God, Jesus. Crazy. And then I think, because I told him, Father, to do you need a besha and you need to get a kuhera besha and you de kuhera giri that at Shia Irio, whether Guajero, whether, you know, this is stories from many years ago, okay? So because of that one, because he heard that I'll be giving him every month 30,000, he agreed to give my two brothers each a small area where each can build. <laughs> you know, the, the Kikuyus, they always have big lands. So he could have given each a, a, an area like this, like apart, apart. What he did, he gave both a place like this and he shared it. One, I don't know how you call it. You have like three lines of lands. Instead of giving, because we have two brothers, one there, one there, and he live remained with the one where his house is. No, what he did, he when he heard I would be giving him thirty thousand every month, he, he gave my two brothers on one place like this, and they divide there. And well and good. I told my brothers better than nothing. So each of my brothers they build their homes there. Okay, my two brothers. I helped them to build their two homes and electricity and blah blah. Now listen. After that was done, unfortunately, my mom, my late mom, passed 2004. And because she was living in Mombasa in my house, I flew from, by that time I was living in Germany. I flew from Germany to Mombasa to go for the funeral for my late mom. And when I was there, my dad had come because they were never officially divorced. They were just separated for, for many years. My dad had come to Mombasa, okay? and. Um, we talked, me and dad, and I asked him, dad, is that okay when late mom is laid to rest in the, at our home? Because you're still, she was, you know, she was still your wife. You are never officially divorced. And even if you were, she gave you four nice children. Is that all right? Guess what he told me? He told me, my dad had then found another woman she was living with. Now listen, he said himself, in our village, you must give me some money so I can move out, so I can go and start a life somewhere else. And I said, all right, how much? He told me, have a million. By those years, in the year 2004, remember I've come from Germany to go and lay my mom to rest. And there is my dad telling me to give him half a million so my late mom can be buried in his land and he can move out there with this other woman. And for me, because I wanted peace, I thought, okay, when he move out with this other woman, it's nice. If they can go and start another life somewhere and my two brothers will have peace. And my mom, my late mom, will be buried in her home that she was married before she left. I said, it's fine. I told my dad, okay. Uh, because remember, I, I left Kenya when I was a young girl. So I have a little bit of mzungu in my head. 
I believe very much in document, in signing. I told my dad, please, can we make an agreement letter and you sign it with witnesses? He said, yes. So I made it official. That is th that three, four days before we, bar we, lay my, we go to, to lay my mom uh, to rest. And it's in Mombasa. She was, she was in a march in Mombasa. We had to take a flight with her. You know, in the same plane. Can you imagine in the same plane with your mom who is dead and she's, you know, it was heartbreaking. But anyway, my dad agreed. He wrote a letter. I still have it up to today. And he signed. I signed. And five witnesses signed. I counted the money. But I told dad, I will give you 250000 now. Okay? Because the title did. I told dad, what about the title deed? He told me the title deed is not re yet written our names. It's not for my dad and his brother. His late brother is not yet. It's on his grandfather, on, his, on their dad. So I can give half and the rest half after the title deed. They will develop the title deed. After the, devil, uh, the title deed is out, it will be on two names, my dad and his brother. Okay. And on my dad's title, he will change it to my two brothers' names. Me, I didn't want anything. I have my own stuff. That was the deal. We put it on a document. Document, very important. We wrote it down. Everything that we've agreed with the money and everything and what I've paid and that the rest I will pay after the title deed is out. Everything signed, okay? We are together up to there. All right. I get a copy. My dad got a copy. Perfect. Then, now it's time to go and lay mom to rest. I'm happy that... At least, Dad actually took a flight, earlier flight. He flew alone. He went and to, told uh, told his um, his woman they should park and go. Now he had two hundred fifty thousand, but those years it was much money. It was quite a million. Two thousand four, it was a lot of money. Quickly, quickly, his woman out, and they went and I think they rented a place. Okay, to start with. Now listen, they rented a place. Okay, somewhere in Nairobi, somewhere I don't know where a cheaper place maybe for 10,000 or something. They rented a place. Ruaka or I don't know, something like that. So when we took the flight, I think the next day was, yeah, the next day or two days later with my late mom and there was my aunties, my late sis then, and you know, all those people. We took another flight and we flew to Nairobi and then we went to Lokabete to lay mom to rest and everything went fine with the funeral. We arrived there. Dad actually even came for the funeral, but not his woman, you know, and everything went fine with the late mom. She was ready to rest nicely, okay? Now, after maybe a few months, the title deed came out. And as I had made uh, an agreement that when the title deed is out, I'll pay 250000 I paid actually even before it was fully out. I paid the rest 250 to dead. All bank transactions there. And then I called. I asked him, dead. Um, you've already gotten the title deed because a cousin of mine told me the title deeds are out and so whatever they've already, my dad is on, he's on his name and the other one on his brother. I asked him, when are you going to change the, your title deed to my two brothers' names? Guess what? Guess what? First, dad ignored me. They had already moved from that Ruaka rented place. They had gone to Rogoro. Rogoro is those remote areas with the title deed. So my dad fooled me. He did. So there he was. My two brothers. But at least mom is laying to rest nicely in, his, in that land because that's where we grew up. Okay? Now, listen. I give you this story because I know that there is that thing. You, you're so mean. You're so bad. Muri Aodumono, it's it's so unfair, it's not all right. So what happened was they moved to those Rogoro areas, and now that woman was to work on my dad. She made sure that now all the other lands he have, not only the Kagira, the, the title is my dad's name. He had the Kikuyu land, the one piece, and there Rogoro he had I don't know how many lands. She started to tell him, and then the moment I heard. They already ran to Rogoro. I told my brothers, Because he fooled me with the I just wanted that Kagira land, not, not his other places. And I paid for it. 
Nuthu million, it was a lot of money. First, that my mom could be laid to that land, and it's crazy. Why? I think Kikuyu is, for me, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of our people, the Kikuyu people. Why are you like that? Is it only my family? Can then you are there? Anyway, let me continue with my story. My dad went there, so we closed all the lands. He tried. 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 He was being told, no, this land has issue. This land has issue. This land has issue. We had put covets. So, if you're... I'm giving you this story so that you can learn from me. I'm giving you this story so that you can learn from me. Eh? Ashiari ona ma ma ukieta tani ma shajagiya, because my dad, my dad was a apart from the alcohol thing, he he was a good man. I never thought he would do something like that. Ako ya besha si yako na niyarega na taito na dieta ka ona marito ma kuwa my two brothers. Many at least my two brothers ni mo na hado ende. Ati ona mutumi ogya kihe mi kudere oki ka whatever. At least my brothers mati wiki oja. Magi kiri oja. Magi re ako bari o mude. Yes. Ako dio hegi de. Yes. So now listen. After that, they say to the rural areas, and for me, nitowe you you Even after my dad Aji Kogwo, believe you me, I kept on twenty years. Mi akamiro goi the data raga dimu he aga pesha every month thirty thousand. Even I think it was more than twenty years after after Aji Kogwo wode. I still felt mi a do mi diriye. Na to dwe na kuhuru kuhuru nilimote. At least di muwe besha onage shehidi yoye. Na shia guo. Eka gire kwa nita kakuwa kega. Guess what? The woman he had. Who is also late now. Usho naki ari hainege. Besha yi tumo kwe nwe wayaka shio the. I give you the story. That when he. When she took fadhe those areas of rogoro. She used to give fadhe. Githeri. Githeri kena. Tufosho tunini yu gitara. And very hard maze. There are some people who went to those rogoro. They were shocked. When they went there. And plan, and they met to see what kind of food Father was getting. Get there, na ni akodi na ede o get there ikiya bebe nyomo. Mudurura to mero ni mwana wa kebe ro ya giri that or muiri. Are you kidding me? In any way, what happened was, muri mo afafa wa gout uri akora wana gote ne miya kamege. Uri demo he the story is kya beri diaro gano oki musho kerera. He got it again at his old age. And that's how we moved him now from Rogoro. We brought him to Rokabete Hospital. He's still my dad. What could I do? And I had to look for him for hospital. They did the best they could for him. He stayed like three weeks in the hospital. I was there also still for him. Still, we hear your cries. Muria Shiri. Because for me, I did a lot. I did. Really. Anyway, my dad passed away after he was given um, off from hospital. He went home. Just a few, few weeks later, he passed. But I'm giving you the story so that you can hear. Ate adhuri, lili amwati waniatu miya muti ewe kamitu goteo. It's so bad. Rufafa, I get that my two brothers. Madhiko, those years, my second born brother, I think he was 24. Yes, he was maybe 24 because he's two years older than me. My older brother, he was 25 because he's one year older than my second one. You know? I'm a getter a madiko. Matiaruga mire irewe egra. Matiare na wera stable. I'm a getter a madiko. And the worst thing was, if dad had told me, he would fool me. I could have, for those years, I could have bought each land for my two brothers. Madi meyakire hadu hagi. But I thought, hey, it's nice. You know, we Kikuyus, I remember that I call Missy or Eo. You know, we, we say like it's it's family homes, and we know the men are the ones bringing the women. Because we women, we get married and we move away from our homes, but the men they bring the women. So I thought it would be nice that they build their homes there. I thank God now they have it. You know, but what they went through, I think dad terrorized them for years until at least when he moved out because he had to move out because he was ashamed because of fooling me about the title deed. That's why he had to go to Rogoro areas with his woman. I think it's that woman who told him to can to can end the title. 
tole nayo that's why they went and then later you know it's crazy because god see everything god see everything ashiari please but here we can see na togo to do for me or for father it was so bad and that's i'm afraid this is my prayer if you're a kikuyu parent please listen to my story utikirire rugano rwakwa niwo bebe ta mushiari tukaneke ciana cia kuguo uri my dad ajikire please na wewe when you're a parent ugite ciana na mutumi ocio please let us ciana support those children tiga konya maria ciana to ni watiguo because like we wazungus wazungus don't do that wazungus don't do that matigana na mudu they are start there for their children they make sure that their children are all right why you can't behave like the wazungus ukamenyo ni thakame yaku do kwenda thakame yaku e e e e dubuke na hanini why you don't do that like for me i remember even when i was i was still a young girl when i got my first divorce I took my daughter that I had with that man like like you know the kameakwa I gave everything to my daughter You know I made sure that she's all right she's fine even if I'm not together with her dad Even when her dad was not going well I used to support him to make sure that he's also okay Ona ko ni mudhugo na dhugo ni mwe ni mathia makahinyirirwo I used to make sure I'm working I'm earning good is your dad all right Is he okay because I have a child with him. So I think it's high time if you're a dead beat dad. I won't talk a dead beat mother because it's very rare times you find dead beat mothers. You know we mothers we carry our children 9 months. Even if you took ashiana miarikeda. We parents we are the ones who give birth to the children. We know the pain. What about you men? Why you can't have a little bit of hurt? come in i can you if you are a dead be dead go look for that child go do it god will bless you don't ignore that you just come back after the children are well up that's the time you're showing up and if you are also like like i i gave my story with my dad he was there for us when they were together with mom he educated us very good schools he did but the moment the moment Mom left. He turned to be wild. He became another person. For me and my late sis, he couldn't get to us. Idwe to ari ron haya already. Idwe to naito shito. He couldn't get to us. But my two brothers, can you imagine if I was not able? Oko dia mata idiriye. Mage kiri atia. Oko dia mahaya kabesha. Wow. What? Magitura ka street ine. And I'm very sure there are thousands and thousands of children. being mistreated by their fathers just because their mothers left if you're a man and you're doing that i want you to learn the story with my late dad because when my late dad got sick at his old age he got lixol i don't know if you know what is lixol nira de chi shumaga you know modo modo ratara dikaige ora if you lay too much if you lay too much and you're not moving a lot you get lixols i don't know what they're called in english na niro ta shade na ruo muno i'm giving you this story so that you can hear ati kai eiguru nyo naga to kalirie ciana ciaku for me i cried so much for years and years for my late dad for me even it did hurt me so much about him drinking my money because he did what hurt me so much was when he fooled me about changing the title deeds in loka beta for my two brothers and i'd given him half million he fooled me He did. Anyway, with this story, I hope you've learned something. If you have a deadbeat dad, let him listen to this video. Tell him Jerry from Sweden have made this video for deadbeat dads and the singers of this song, you know? It's um 90k, we all know him, those who are from Kenya. And by the Kawajeni, they've made this song. It's a very new song. So if you haven't heard this song, please go to their page, go to the page you listen to this song. It's an amazing song. And if you have a dead beat dad, push this video to him. And also the song he has to listen. The dead beat dad, they all have to listen to this song. I'm sure they are ignoring it because they know it's the truth, right? Anyway, what can I say? 
all I can say is that it's high time for dead beats dead in Kenya, in my country. I can talk on behalf of Kenya because I'm Kenyan. It's high time for dead beats dead in Kenya to be abolished. Abolished means that they, they won't be any more. Muduri any. When you're over 18 years, that's when you're supposed to contact yourself in sexual activities because you're grown up then. So you should know very well when you're sleeping with a woman without protection, that woman can get pregnant. So if you know that you're not ready yet to raise up a child, hey, use protection if you still have to make love. And you as a woman, you should know that there are dead beats dead out there. And especially in Kenya, in my country. Because you'll be left alone. That man won't care what that child eats, what that child dresses, where that child sleeps, what school that child goes. They don't care. They don't care. Dead beats dead. They don't care. So it's high time. You as a woman, before you agree to go to bed with somebody, we are sure you Ask yourself some questions. Before you agree to make love with somebody without protection. Somebody, you, you just met somebody. It's high time to take precautions. And for our government in Kenya, you have to step up. You have to make sure that any deadbeat's dad are brought to book. Yes, they have to be answerable because this can't go on. It's not all right. It's not okay. I know growing up, most of the men who used to chase away their women, the women used to go away with the children. They used to go back where they came from, in their homes. Can you imagine? They go back there and then it's hardship and hardship. It's high time that our women to stop being treated like that. Atumia itoma beriyo here you don't play around with women. You don't. Because if you refuse to pay child support, they don't play around. If you don't pay so if you don't if you refuse to pay child support, okay hida, like you can you Yes. Huh? It's high time. Women in Kenya, raise up, wake up. They sometimes the way you go demo, demonstrating around about I don't know what. One day, women in Kenya, you have to demonstrate about dead beats dead. All the men who are it can't go on like this. That the men are just there enjoying themselves sexually. It's high time. It's high time, even if it's to go to the street and say no to dead beats dead in Kenya. We have to do that. It's high time because so many women, they're suffering with the children and their men. They just go, they find other lives. They marry other women. They start new lives. But the moment the children, they ignored, they left. The moment they go up, they show up. She do in Jesus' name. This has to end. Anyway, what can I say? I hope you've learned something. Make sure your deadbeat dads listen to this song. Don't let it pass. They have to listen to it by force, by fire. Yes, and they can listen as well to my video that I've made. For those that don't understand Kikuyu as well, you can, you can listen to it in English because dead, dead, deadbeat dads, they are also not only Kikuyus. Kikuyu, we have 40, 42 tribes in Kenya. And there are a lot of dead be dead as well in other tribes. That's why I do this in English. So you can get it. Not only the Kikuyus. There are many out there lying to women. When the women get pregnant, they just run away. It's, it's not okay. It's not fair. All right. What can I say? Hope you've learned something. I really hope so. And um, for those who haven't touched the subscribe button, please do it to support me. I'll appreciate. You can like, you can comment, you can share. Yes, you can do that. And as we always do, let me see what you've already said a little bit. Um, oh, uh, sorry for those that came a little bit later. I see AJ. I see Antipia. Love God, I see you as well. 
Let me see one more rhyme back. I'll read it all. Let me see a little bit what you wrote. Child of the Most High is saying hello. And CK, Nancy Peter Lifestyle is saying hello, everyone. Nancy Peter, good evening, uh, host. Nancy Peter, very nice to see you. Long time. Nice to see you, Nancy. We hope you're fine. We are worried where you are. I miss, I miss you all, Sherry. Oi, umefika 93. Itabidi nisikilize all one by one. Yes, exactly. This one is music short number 93. So there you are. If you haven't listened from number one to now, you've missed a lot. Go back. When you put NCK2310, you'll find everything there. You'll find the shots and you'll find the lives, you know? So you, you can listen to both. The shots, they are very short clips. And every short clip is explained in English. So you have a lot of work to do. That's your homework. We are in music shot number 93, right? Um, let me see. Uh, Unwind with Perry. Hey, child of the most high. Child of the uh, most high saying hi, Perry. Priscilla updating, saying hey, host and chat. Priscilla saying hello. And Priscilla also sending a heart. Thank you. Love God saying hey, are you all? Child of the most high. That's when... They all show up. Shame on them. Exactly. The dead beats dead. Eh, muo kaka ni gashia na shia toga. Nini? Tunajua. Eh, Priscilla updating to TV show, sending a heart. Uh, Priscilla shows in, wow, absolutely. Why he left them with the mom. Yeah, exactly. You know, because the dead beats are, they always say, hey, datikita tamu muanyu, daddy muega. Datikita tamu muanyu. You know, they always find excuses. Don't listen to those excuses. Show ni maheni. Wanga lady sending a heart. Wanga lady uh, also as well. Uh, Priscilla saying, hey, Wanga, Wanga, uh, everyone like. Uh, I would appreciate. Uh, Wanga lady saying, updating. Uh, Priscilla saying, let's give the video like, guys. Yes, I would appreciate. Wame Rembag, hello all. Nyox, uh, Kenya saying, bio, running. Oh, thank you, yes. Uh, Priscilla saying, Wamuyu, hey, dear. Wame Rembag saying, like the lives, please. Yes, I appreciate. Priscilla updating, Nyox, hey. Unweed with Perry, hey, Wamui Rambag. Um, Nyok Skinya, Priscilla, hi. Wamui Rambag, Nancy Pira, hello. Yes, we, we, we get the Nancy Pira back. Very nice to see you, Nancy, as I said. Priscilla sending a heart. Priscilla dating true and NCK. Priscilla is saying, Unweed, hello. Priscilla is saying, this is how they are. Yes, Priscilla updating TV show. Thank you. Love God. Hey, Nancy, uh, looked for you all over. Me too. I used to look around. Yeah. Where did your videos go, Nancy? I just know today when you're cleaning the pots, where did they all go? You can tell us one day when we come to you. And uh, Nancy Peter, love God. Um, Nancy Peter is saying, ladies, once again, good evening. Thank you. Uh, Inverse Development Consultant, hi, NCK. Love God is saying, uh, Nancy, great, see you soon. Love God is saying, NCK, you're such a blessing on your family. I try. I, I, I did when I had a lot of money. Now I don't have money anymore but when i had i did what i could yes um nancy peter is sending a heart um love god is saying hello child of the most high so sad aj dimension is saying hello love god uh bets was yeah bets were ah, in english yeah that's what my dad got bets were very very bad ones when he got old yes auntie pia too late don't worry Better late than never. You can rewatch Auntie Pia. It's fine. Wame Reinberg, uh, Pia, love God and all. Hello. Uh, Auntie Pia is saying, Wamoyo Uhoro. Love God. Hello. Love God. Hello. Uh, nice to see you guys. Wamoyo is saying, like the video, please. Those joining, yes, I'll appreciate. Love God is saying, Auntie Pia, hi. Uh, love God. Wamoyo, hi. Love God is sending smileys or something. Child of the Most High. NCK, I really love listening to you. I open up. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I really love what I do here. I really do first. I love music. I really love music. When I was a young girl in my village in Luakabete, I was a Sunday school girl and I used to sing. Those people who used to go to Kirangari, they know I used to sing every Sunday. They used to give me a platform to sing a God song, gospel. I used to love that. Yes. Actually, I sang until I left, until I went to Germany. They used to give me a place in Kirangari, yes. But now nearby, very close to my village, uh, to my, their, my village, they built another song, another church, uh, Kagira, but I've never been there. But Kirangari, that's where I used to go. I grew up as a Sunday school girl there. Those who know that place, maybe you know me. Uh, anyway, I thank you all for always coming here, giving me your time, giving your ear. I really do appreciate. And tomorrow, we'll be back, same time. Um, I always hear 7.40 Kenyan time. 
So in the evening, yeah, 7.40, we'll be back and we hear the next bang. I call the songs bang, yeah? Hope you've learned something. What can I say? Thank you all so much. May God bless you. I don't take it for granted that you always find time to come here. I really do appreciate. And for those who watch later, it's fine with me because I do understand that some people are busy. This I also watch some, some of the shows later. So it's fine with me. So never feel like, oh, Jerry's angry when you're not coming. It's okay with me. You can watch whenever time you have. They are here online, right? All right. Thank you all and stay blessed. Bye-bye.